everyone, and welcome to another session of Now We Talk. Uh, this is our international set, uh, forum that we can promote ideas and help everybody grow in your sales, in your business, and with getting more students. Uh, this is a mission to succeed for everybody, and we're always welcoming new ideas. So if you have any ideas, please give us an email around so we can get them onto our uh, list of ideas. Today, we're going to be uh, having a discussion, but as you see in the screen in front of you, these are upcoming ones that we've already got scheduled, so stay tuned for those. After any of the sessions, we always put them on YouTube, and we'll have links for that as well for you. As far as today's concerned, uh, we've got Emily delgado Key who is going to be speaking, and I'm going to have our very own VP of Sales and Marketing, Angelo. He's going to give us a nice introduction and a bit of a lead in. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the screen over to Angelo. All right. Hey, guys, thanks so much. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And what I'd like to do is just kind of refresh a little bit um, to a presentation that we did some time ago uh, about why now we and I think it's important for us to understand uh, this presentation, because what we have today is Emily, who's going to dovetail into this uh, presentation for us um, to kind of show you the uniqueness about what now what now he has to offer. So just to kind of tap back a little bit on this um, presentation we did a couple months ago. Uh, the, now he, in my opinion, has the single greatest product in the world, and it's the ability to allow you to create your own instructor specified specialties. So talking a little bit about the history now, we all know this history, but, you know, it's hard to mention the diving industry without mentioning Nawi. So Nawi goes all the way back to the first scuba units that Jacques Cousteau sold, uh, the, or the origins and some of the early risers at Nawi were just super, you know, just legendary, the early ITCs. And what made Nawi so unique was the fact that it, it just came from the, the EDU uh, mindset, the dot orgs. So we were able to go ahead and just be more, just educators and be able to take those unique programs and kind of customize them into our own programs. Now his timeline is strong. Throughout the evolution of the diving industry in 1976, it was the first training agency to create the dive master designation. It's a terminology, it's a term that we throw around so loosely today, you know, dive master, dive master, dive master but it was the first training agency. Now he was the first training agency to actually create the designation. 1992, now he became the first mainstream recreational training agency to sanction uh, nitrox training for recreational divers. St the story of now he begins with a shared vision of quality scuba training. Uh, that should be a commitment to dive safe through education. The difference that offers, uh, now he's difference is that it offers a clear path from leadership through a series of featured recreational diver courses, utilizing award-winning educational materials to inc which and incorporates rescue at every level. So, and that's a very important key factor is that we utilize and incorporate at the entry level, the advanced, the master, it doesn't matter. We're always circling back to refresh our rescue skills. Our learning formats, you know, you can, we can go, go old school, we can use books, you know, or we can utilize the new modern e-learning. We just relaunched another e-learning version here just this past week. Now he embraces uh, innovation and dynamic approaches. It gives the, it encourages the instructors to have academic freedom adapt, to, that can adapt and meet specific, specific needs of the student. Um, and primarily because the ocean is challenging, so training must be challenging. All right, you gotta, you know, if we train up, we, we you know, we coach them up, you know, to the to the level in which we need to dive. One of the unique things, I mean, over the course of this past year, yes, we've been experiencing a pandemic and we've been going through some rough times, but you know, sometimes you got to make, I guess, lemonade out of lemons. So out of COVID, there is more than ever business owners and instructors are searching for ways to grow. And one of the unique things that now he offers is that the ability to have this academic freedom approach that gives the store owners and instructors the ability to create and customize highly skilled instructor specified programs. 
you can create programs that are indigenous to your own store. You know, we have Emily here today. She's an, a course director out of the Atlanta area. And she's very, uh, um, just very uh, forward thinking when it comes to this. She's, she's customized all her own programs to, it's her brand. You know, now he's the vehicle, but it's her brand. Um, the, the approach coupled up with a, uh, with, uh, educational material and an aggressive pricing. So this makes it a great approach for now. And this is a, a, a feature or a, a, a slide presentation or a, that we showed some time back. And if you look on the left-hand side and you look at these Campbell pork and beans, this slide right here. And if you look up in here and you see this can of pork and beans is 99 cents. And this can is $1.50 and this can is $3 and this can is $5. And we pitch this to your constituents, you know, hey man, pick a can, all right? Well, everybody's gonna pick the 99 cent can because it's identically the same as the other cans. Whereas with Naui, with the academic approach that we have, it's a more performance-based training versus process oriented. So by utilizing the instructor specified specialty programs, we'll be able to create our own niche in the market. You guys remember several weeks back, we had a presentation from David Winford who talked about uh, you know, uh, how to win the profit game. One of the things that he discussed in his uh, presentation was creating your own uniqueness, creating your own niche. Um, now he has a long history of supporting instructor specified specialties, you know, the fire department in New York, Sonny Carter neutral buoyancy laboratory, uh, United States military academy, West Point, the Coast Guard Academy, Disney. I mean, we've all heard these approaches. We've all heard these over the years, but it's important to see this slide right here about this new organization force blue. A lot of people know of my affiliation with them that I've been working with them on the side as the director of diving. But the unique thing about this organization and the reason why it has to be brought up is that, yes, the fire department, New York, yes, the Sunny Carter Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, you know, these are all things that have been discussed and we've been touting for years, okay, that, you know, they're indigenous to Naui. But this organization right here, Force Blue, was constructed on a bar napkin four years ago, okay, five years ago it was constructed on a bar napkin. And and it was based, it was able to, and through the process, it has been over the last five years, it has voted the top five veteran nonprofit organizations to watch. It was voted the Sea Hero of the Year by NOAA and Scuba Diving Magazine. It has recently achieved reciprocity with NOAA, Florida DEP, Florida Fish and Wildlife, um, University of Miami, Nova Southeastern University, um, Florida Atlantic University. Um, and just recently, it was awarded its AAUSOM status and was all built on the fundamental principles of NAWI's academic freedom. This little organization that was built on a bar napkin was constructed to be one of the top non veteran, the top veteran organizations in diving over the last five years and was all built on the fundamental principles of NAWI. So that's the importance of, of understanding creating your own niche. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and just kind of, we, we're going to bring in Emily right here, and then we can kind of circle back on this. Um, but I want to bring in Emily because I want people to understand, you know, and I want her to talk about her style, her ability to create instructor specified specialties, and to go with that. So Emily, Emily's a course director up in the Atlanta area. I met her several months ago, saw what she was doing. It's pretty innovative and dynamic, and I hope it catches on so that the rest of the membership can utilize this forward thinking to customize their own thoughts and their own teaching to make them different from everybody else. Emily. Hi guys, uh, I'll correct you Angela, unless you're upgrading my sort of my designation. I'm not quite at the course director yet. So uh, just Almost. the instructor, maybe one day, right? So uh, my what, experience what? with, go ahead. Just what, as the people come online, it's important that they use the Q and A. If you look to the bottom of your screens, you'll see Q and A. If you ask the questions, we'll do our best to answer them throughout the seminar. And if we don't get to one, they'll be answered afterwards, uh, just to let all the questions are in one spot. 
the chat area is uh, for things that are up that are other informations. For instance, uh, Madison will put a link up there later as well. Okay, so I just want to steer people to the Q and A. Sorry, go ahead, Emily, and I'm going to bring oh, this screen good. up for you. So thank you. I'm an uh, Atlanta area instructor. I've just gotten my instructor trainer designation uh, with Angela up in Virginia in September. And uh, Angela saw a little peek of my slides and, and the way I do things uh, to teach. This really was derived and, and came to me as part of my ITC. I was challenged by my course director to put on dynamic presentations and I wasn't allowed uh, to use any of the canned materials that now he graciously provides us in the instructor uh, materials. So uh, it was trial by fire for me. I knew nothing about uh, slides, PowerPoints, audiovisual presentations, um, but I knew that a piece of poster board and a whiteboard wasn't gonna cut it for this guy. And so uh, luckily my training partner had some experience with this and taught me how, and I hope you guys, hope to teach you guys that it is really a simple process. Uh, and so I'm gonna present to you how to build your own slide deck in just a handful, a couple of handfuls of easy steps. But this has allowed me to uh, individualize my slides and my presentations in a way that is always accessible to me. And I can, um, I can take my Nitrox class on the go. I've actually taught Nitrox on my iPad in an airplane. Uh, with customers who put off their certification to the last minute. So it's super portable and accessible over a lot of different types of uh, platforms. You can access it through your iPhone, your iPad, your laptop. Um, that's one of the beauties of it. So uh, we'll get started. What are we talking about? If you'll switch to slide two, please. What is a slide deck? So uh, think back to uh, old school slides. Remember, you used to go to school if you're old enough and have gray hair like me. You have those old timey slides and slide projectors and slide carousel. This is just the 2020 version of that. A slide deck is a collection of slides, audio visual aids to help you help your students, right? It, it helps me because it gives me a little cue. Hey, this is what's next. Um, it reminds me of maybe some of the parts of the topics that I can uh, expound on so I don't forget any one important point. And it gives my students a visual aid uh, to follow along with me. So that's what a slide deck is. It's a visual presentation, all right? Uh, next slide, please. I like to use Google Slides and uh, here's why. Uh, it's super easy to use. It presents a consistent product. It's, uh, it's very user intuitive. Um, I like my slides to be consistent from one class to the next. And so uh, it offers me that. I like to collaborate with fellow instructors and I can easily give permission to anybody else uh, to collaborate, offer their opinion, or maybe they have some higher level skills with Google Slides that I don't. So I could ask, hey, can you clean this slide up for me? Or can you have a look at slide number seven? And we can collaborate on a way to make the point clearer or to find a better graphic. I've already hit home on the easy access. But the number one reason I like it is it's free. I don't have to buy a Microsoft license. Um, and for that reason, it, it won it won my heart. It was free and easy to use and I could understand it. Emily, let me ask you this question real quick. I know you're going to flip on here, but any variations or is it easier to use in PowerPoint or is it, it's, 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 you think it's, it's probably just listen to what you're saying right there. It's probably more, everybody has Google now. So mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, I'm sure it's right in your Gmail suite. So it's probably, right. it's probably a lot easier, more accessible. Is that what right. you're saying? It's easier, it's more accessible. It's not as powerful as a platform. So there's not as many choices, but there's enough, there's plenty in there. And so for that reason, a lot of people feel like the power of choice of less choice is easier for them and still uh -huh. gives them all the tools they need to present what they want in a fashion that's um, visually exciting or relevant to them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. 
All right, so I've broken it down. This is in the simplest form, assuming you don't know a whole lot about this, if anything at all, all right? So yeah. step one, if you'll advance the slide, please. Uh, you need to go to Google's homepage, all right? And in the upper right-hand corner, you're gonna see this little grid here up in the upper right-hand corner. That's, Angela, you're referring to that, your Google suite. Click on the grid and you'll be given the box below that has news, Gmail, Google Meet, contacts. You're gonna select Drive, Google Drive, all right? If you don't have an account at this point, or you do have an account, you'll have to log in. If you don't have an account, you'll have to set one up. All right, we're gonna click on Google Drive. Uh, from your drive, you're gonna click in the upper left-hand corner, there's a big plus new button. Can't see it in this slide, it's underneath what I've highlighted already. But click the new button and select Google Slides to get to the correct part of your drive. Step three, you're gonna select the plus button to create a new slide. Yeah. So when you select create a new slide, it's gonna offer you a bunch of different layout options, or you can make, you can start with just a fresh blank slate, a blank white slide. Yeah, so in step four, I've highlighted the boxes where you need to select your theme over on the right hand side. They have pre-built in themes. All right, I just, uh, the theme for my slideshow today is the, you know, the bright blue that you're seeing, the bright blue header on every slide. But there are a lot of different choices. Some of them are more visually appealing than others. Some are super graphic, you know, and kind of uh, distracting in my opinion. I think they even have some that look like water. Some are more playful, some are more serious. So select a theme, name your presentation over in the left, upper left-hand corner. And then there are already title boxes in that theme. There's already uh, right there in the middle, it's saying click to add title. It's that simple. You've already made your first slide when you start playing around with this. In step five, you can choose additional layouts in your theme. So uh, this is a different color variation of the theme I've selected today for my presentation. So if you wanted to change uh, a variation on theme, these are all the different choices you have for each additional slide. All right, so you've made that first slide, it matched the first theme, you wanna make a second slide, you just hit the plus button and then choose the layout. And the layout already has the color graphics and the text box to fill in. So let me just, I got a question right here. I got to answer it live, but yeah, uh, do it. so Wait, the I reason that it is important to build a slide deck is that going through the process, this is just, we're just talking about a generic thing right now, but mm -hmm. there's instructor specified specialties out there that you can customize your program to talk about specialties that you are building, programs that you're inventing, programs that you're talking about. You need some type of content. I understand that we're not out here trying to, you know, we're not out here trying to push snorkels or trying to sell equipment. It's about building content specific to your instructor or your program that you're trying to teach. Um, you know, for instance, like if you have a scientific program or some type of a, um, some type of a, you know, just, you know, I mean, we're, there's all kinds of, you know, boat tending, all types of abilities to create your own programs off of your own outlines. And this is the only thing in the, 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 the having the ability to create an, uh, some type of a content or some type of a um, um, presentation will just add to support what you're teaching out in the mm -hmm. field. In addition to that, okay, you can also, you know, if you look at some of the stuff that now he presents in the open water class or the advanced open water class, you can go in there, kind of pull the content from that if you want to teach a very entry basic level course and kind of just throw the important information into the slide presentation to make it faster and more be able to pivot faster to get to the pool. That's a great point. I mean, I, I have a basic slide deck and it's, you know, it's a couple hundred slides that I present over the course of, you know, 10 hours of classroom time. Um, that is a way that my shop owners uh, have differentiated themselves in this market. Um, 
We uh, don't offer e-learning unless it's requested. Um, we teach a lot of families with young children and we feel like we can best meet the needs of especially the younger kids um, who are often distractible or need uh, additional uh, help understanding a concept. Um, so we built slides to meet the, all of those needs and that's how we differentiated ourselves in this market. If someone wants the e-learning, we're happy to provide that for them but uh, we justify the expense of the education by saying we're different because we teach everything with our proprietary education system. We do it in person, me, you know, me the instructor to you. It creates a better learning experience because you can stop at any point and ask me to explain it until you understand it. And I think too, it creates a better instructor. You have to have a pretty deep toolbox to meet the needs of a 10 year old and the person that works at the CDC that's a virologist. They are gonna learn at different levels. And so as an instructor, um, because I'm teaching you know, me to you, I've gotta be able to meet all those needs. And so it keeps me on my toes too. And Emily, I just wanna circle back on something because there's a question that's here that um, some of these questions that are coming in are, are they're, they're, they're great questions, but they are, require a long answer. Sure. You know, Lucas asks the question about, yeah, you know, and Lucas, you're correct, okay? You can go into the NAWI instructor guide and you can do all this stuff in the NAWI instructor guide and, you, and there's on core and stuff and that's great, okay? But at the end of the day, I'm, it's about making you unique. It's not about making NAWI new unique. OK, it's about making you and your brand unique. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize here is that take this concept and build your brand, make you make your business, you as an individual, make yourself unique so that the hundred stores that are on your street cannot compete with you. Does that make sense? What I just said, uh, Emily, Bill, does that make sense? I believe, yes, it does. And I, I think the key is, is one of the great things with now is, yes, you can use our pre-canned presentations right off or, yes, you can use the e-learning, but when you have a unique situation, we're helping you get there. And I, again, at the end, when we, we tie everything together at the end, we're gonna come up with, we, we're gonna give you a few ideas of just examples how you could use this to make you unique and profitable in your area. And, and that's a great point, what you just said right there, Bill, like, you know, the templates that are in the NAWI instructor guide, you know, they have the NAWI logo and they have all the NAWI stuff and that's great, okay? But there are regions and areas around the world that are indigenous to where you are training. And those, and, and by creating your own slide deck, you can incorporate your orientation, you can incorporate your briefing, you can incorporate all those things into your slide. It is an advanced technique that I'll mention, and I'll be happy to help anybody uh, privately. You know, my email address is available to people if they if they want more specifics. But don't think that I recreated the wheel in creating those hundreds of basic student slide decks. I didn't. I took the instructor uh, slide PowerPoint slides that now he had created. I converted those slides to Google Slides. And then I stripped away the back layer that I didn't care for, that I felt was distracting for my student base. And then I took that information and thought, how can I explain that better? What makes more sense um, for me to present it, whatever topic, in a way that uh, is easier for me to relate to my students? So I did not recreate the wheel. I have in some instances, of course I did for this presentation. I sat down with you know, a notepad, created an outline and then thought about how I can break this down into simple, easy steps to get people started. This is by no means an exhaustive advanced Google Slides. In step six, this is one of the awesome features about this program is once you have selected that slide and you wanna insert almost anything you can, okay? So in my basic student slide, I inserted a video that's on YouTube. You guys might've seen it. A diver takes Crayola marker caps to 130 feet. He's got his dive computer and the color caps of the markers. And this is to demonstrate the effects of uh, 
you know, losing that light spectrum on the color, all right? And my students just love to watch it. It's embedded in one of my slides. But you can upload images from your computer that you've saved. So I like to upload personal pictures that I've taken on trips. Uh, you can search an image on the web in my navigation class, for instance, I wanted a picture of a couple of different types of compasses. And so I just searched the web over here on, uh, on the search feature. It pulled up a couple of different options. I selected one I liked, hit select, boom, it puts it on the slide, and then I can scale it to the size uh, I want to present on my slide. All right, so you can do that with videos, photographs, graphics, pictures, images off the internet, all types of different files. Seven, okay, if you've had any experience with Word documents, publisher, um, to add text, there is this highlighted text box up at the top. And once you touch the T for text and then touch your slide tap, it will add the text box that you can drag up and down the slide and you can make it elongated, big, fat, skinny, whatever suits your needs. It's as simple as that, all right? And just like uh, working in other uh, publishing documents, Word documents, you have your choices of fonts, bold, italicized, color, size, um, those features will probably be familiar to most people who've done any type of uh computer work step eight you can actually animate slides so i'll be talking to my students about emergency ascent the master diver level i'll hit them up for some of their knowledge and see if they can remember who can name a dependent ascent and see if they can come up with these on their own and then i'll click if they can't come up with them or to support them um, I'll remind them, don't forget body breathing, alternate air source, and then we'll move on through the slide. But it, what it does is it doesn't reveal the entire slide all at once. It's revealing just a bit of the slide at a time. And this is a really great method to test your students' uh, recall knowledge for Con Ed students or uh, to elaborate on any one single point on the slide before moving on to the next. Sometimes if you reveal too much information all at once, they're so busy trying to take notes that they miss you talking about point one, the dependent alternate air source ascent, because they're so busy trying to reach and get down to the BC breathing notation they wanna make. So I like to sometimes reveal just a little bit of information at a time, and that gives me an opportunity to hit them up to see if they can come up with one of the bullet points and also to elaborate myself on any one of those points. Yeah, so when you, let's say you've made 10 slides like I did, nine or 10 slides, um, you've looked them over, now you wanna share them. There's this yellow share button in the upper right. I shared with Angelo and Bill and Madison today so they could preview these slides. I shared with uh, another trusted instructor that is a computer whiz and uh, got his opinion and critique on how I could make my slide presentation better. You can also limit whether someone can view the slides or if they, or if you just want them to edit, be able to edit, you can limit their permissions on the slide. And then in step 10, the next slide, uh, there is a presentation mode in the button right next door. And what that does is it takes away all of the clutter that the editors or the slide maker sees and presents it in a clean fashion with all the animation working properly. That's a pretty, uh, it's, I'll tell you, just by looking through the presentation, I've always been a PowerPoint guy. And, um, but I think some of the components that you hit on, which is not everybody has PowerPoint um, mm -hmm. to, and I think that this is a quick and easy way. Everybody's got Google, so it gives us accessibility. Mm -hmm. And just by looking here, I mean, obviously, I think PowerPoint can be somewhat confusing, but it seems like this mm -hmm. presentation with utilizing Google, I think it makes, uh, it seems to be very streamlined, just very, very uh, efficient. Um, and it's about as simple as it can get, just like all the other Google products are. Yeah, it's great. And so and I just wanted to kind of wrap up. This is just meant as a, uh, if you have no experience uh, with this type of thing, you've only been, you know, maybe in the audience for uh, these types of tips. Um, 
within the Google Slide program, there is awesome training. And because the product is so well loved by the general public, you can Google almost any question related to it and come up with a free YouTube video or the, use the training through the help button within the program. But I do have some pro tips that I've discovered over the last couple of years that helped me. Kiss, we all know what that means, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Don't overcomplicate it, you know, your first time out. Don't try to animate everything and, you know, have videos embedded. Keep it really simple. Uh, I will tell you for all my slide decks, and I've got one for every class I teach so far, um, they get a little 220 grit sandpaper in the review process before each class. I see things that catch my attention or something I just want to make a little bit better, or I've received some feedback from a, from a student maybe that did or did not like a graphic. So just keep it very simple. You can always amend it and change it, make it better uh, as you get better, as you get more experience. Less is more, all right? Uh, I learned this uh, pub in publishing, all right? We wanna keep a really clean look, not a lot of distractions, uh, less is more. Spell check, all right, Angelo? I saw I saw a little glitch on one of your slides, buddy. I saw it there too, but I've, I've it's been sitting there for like three months, and I still haven't corrected it. Was point. You send it my way. I'll fix it up for you. All right. So spell check, and that's a tool. Within that was the, just that was just a test program. to see if you were watching, Emily. That was it. Good job. Yeah. Excellent. A plus plus. You're a good friend, Bill. <laughs> exactly. Spell check it. It's not always right, but uh, yeah, give it a go. It's just one of the tools, just like any other computer-based program. Seek a peer editor or someone to give you some feedback and and critique. All right. Uh, I have a couple other instructors that I'll give permission. Hey, can you peek in on this and just let me see if you think that is is uh, looks good, is sound information, and um, is, is a likable product. Give it a NAWI standards checkup, all right? Make sure you are meeting or exceeding NAWI standards and the information you're presenting is solid. Promote shop products, all right? This is one that uh, my shop owner benefited from greatly when I did this. I took out all the products that were in the pre-existing uh, NAWI slide packets and I changed every product to be something that my shop sells, all right? So we were promoting what we sold and guess what began to happen? People wanted those products and the shop owner requires that his instructors use those products. Guess what? People want what the instructor uses. So uh, that internal uh, promotion helps with sales and product placement. Just a little it hint also in there. Helps with, I mean, it's also an opportunity to tell the story, you know, utilizing your presentation. It also, your customizability, it also allows you to tell the story of your business. You know, the features, right. the benefits that you're utilizing, you, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you can plug in trips that you're going on. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go into um, uh, areas like different, like types of, uh, you know, all you can, in, you can incorporate all of your customers and all of the family based atmosphere. Community. Yeah. Right. It, you can just build that whole family of your feature right. of your customers right into your presentation to make it more personable. Right. And, you know, uh, people think like this photo I used here, uh, looks pretty innocent, right? But someone will say, Emily, why does that wetsuit have that honeycomb pattern design, right? And then that's an opportunity for me to sell them, to tell them a feature and a benefit of a product. Correct. Right. Um, and then uh, all the pictures in my slides uh, that involve divers and people, well, guess what? Over time, those have all become people who have been in my classes. And so this is a, what I call a wink. You're given a little wink so if someone started out in your basic class and then that photo of them ends up somewhere in Con Ed, that's a little wink to the customer that they're a part of your community, they're a part of your world, and uh, they love to see themselves featured in your slides. Uh, 
So that's uh, yeah. kind, something kind of fun we like to do. Yeah, yeah, plug continuing education opportunities. So, you know, uh, at my shop, people are generally going from basic uh, to nitrox or basic to advanced. So we're always looking for opportunities in both of those slide decks to promote whatever is next, whatever we'd like for them to come to next. You know, dangle that carrot. Uh, and then use your own picks. You know, I couldn't find any pictures I really cared for that uh, in my nitrox slides that really showed the, uh, the real life, this is what's gonna happen. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna tell the resort you want 32%, you're gonna get on the, I never saw any slides. So I just made my own photograph. You know, I had my, my diver analyzing a tank and taking a picture and signing off on the clipboard. And I just made my own. And, um, and it's fun for me too, because then I have a fond memory of making that slide in Cozumel in 2017 and, you know, taking a few shots to get it just right. So uh, make it personal, use your own picks if at all possible. Any questions hanging out there, Angelo? Now we've been answering them as they've been going, but I think we, we covered them all. But I think most importantly, the, uh, the messaging is to make yourself unique. Um, and right. that's the, the big takeaway here is um, just, just making yourself, making it your brand, making it, making you unique, making, you know, promoting your business and especially going into uh, the times that we're in, the challenging times that mm -hmm. we're in separating ourselves from the competition, making ourselves, uh, making our businesses uh, more memorable that, you know, in my mind, it resonates that, you know, to come back and do business with you. So right, and I will tell you, this is one of the making your own Google slides. I know it seems completely overwhelming. But uh, if, you, if you start small and simple, um, once you have that first slide deck done and you have some success with it, then guess what? Moving forward, you can go and copy and pay. Like for me, I have a, I am, here is who I am slide. Well, guess what? I don't reinvent that every time. I go and copy and paste it. Yeah. And so every single slide deck has that exact same, uh, has some of the same elements. You know, my master dive class have slides that were originally created for re for rescue or for nitrox or they just get expanded and elaborated on or they're just part of the bigger picture for the master dive ex experience i mean and that's the uniqueness i think that you know what you're what you're bringing out is the fact that you know and i know that we've shared your you've shared stories about you know the type you know your, your, and your approach and how you teach people and everything like that and your and your passion and, you know, by building your slide decks and by building your stuff, it, it just enhances your ability to, to present that side of you that that's, I think makes it pretty, um, just makes Nowi attractive. Yeah, super. I can't imagine it any other way. Yeah, uh, the uh, nice segue into an ISS, again, instructor specified specialties is one of the huge advantages we have as Nowi instructors. And, um, Again, whether you're starting from uh, a, a, one of the PowerPoint presentations already in an IG or whether you're starting from scratch, whether you have your own software or, or not, the, the Google one is a free and it's in all languages that I'm aware of. I don't know if there's any that they've missed. And I think that's a huge one is now worldwide is we definitely want to make sure that everybody can get access to it. And if they've got computer, they've got access. So that's a big thing. And when it comes to an instructor specified specialty, there's all kinds of ways you can tie that in. Um, just a, a small one is I was talking to somebody over the Christmas holidays and I've run into this myself. You get people who want to say, oh, I want to take the introduction to the intro to tech course. Well, that's great. But they go, but I don't want to have this equipment and that equipment and this equipment. Well, then you can't take the, in I can't give you a card <laughs> for intro to tech, right? But they want to do the skills. What a great opportunity. An instructor specified specialty, an ISS. You could take the intro to tech course. I'm just giving one example. This isn't right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just one example that I had a conversation with somebody. Take the intro to tech course, rip it apart, going, well, based, these guys based on whatever, and, and we can make something unique. Well, they don't want to buy this and this. They don't this, they're not this, they're not this. We could end, end up developing some kind of a course very easily. Doing an ISS is very simple. And people think, oh my God, I'm doing all the work for the tra training department. No, you're not. 
you're doing it for you because you can have a unique course just yeah. for you, whatever, uh, you know, the Atlanta, Georgia, specially of not intro to tech or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure you come up with a slightly the better name. tour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tech minus one or something, but uh, it can be fun. It can be unique. And it's like, well, nobody else offers. Everybody else says, well, you got to go tech. Well, I don't want to put three grand into gear. I mean, I've had experiences with people they want. I want to go down and do that one deep dive that one time, or I want to do that one ice dive that one time. I want to do this, this one time. Well, that's their mission. You, you can't deny the mission, but you can't violate standards. So finding happy ground in the middle could be an ISS, could be. And you just got to make sure it's, again, meeting the NAWI standard. You can take some things out, do it, whatever. Send it in advance to the training department. Yeah. And they go, yeah. yes, or they go, no, because you might think this is a great idea. However, <laughs> there might be something you've missed. And, uh, you know, they're great people. They'll, they'll look at it real quick or send it to, to your uh, regional rep or somebody and say, hey, can you read this for me again? Pass, like you said, when you do a presentation, pass to somebody who knows and they can look at it and go, this is a good idea. But, I mean, I've done one in the, um, uh, one other person I talked to was asking about gear maintenance. We used to have a program years ago. Can we do something with mm -hmm. gear maintenance? And the answer is, sure you can. That would be a perfect ISS. Because what? why not do a gear maintenance program? Again, gear servicing is not maintenance, but that's a different off topic for another day. But why do uh, a maintenance thing of stuff that doesn't promote the gear that you sell in your store? I mean, if you're selling Dive Right or you're selling Aqualung, you want to make sure that it's, heavily weighed to dive right in Aqualung. So I think the ISS, there's a lot of opportunities there. So, um, you know, that's just my version of the ISS as we kind of segue into that side of things. If, if whoever's listening has a question. So, so Lucas is asking if there's a list of ISS programs. ISS programs are instructor specified program, instructor specified specialty programs that you create for yourself. So in other words, yes. I mean, Angelo Fiore has created in, instructor specified specialty programs for Angelo Fiore. Uh, Fire Department of New York has created an instructor specified program, you know, municipality rescue diver that's indigenous to New York City. So instructor specified specialties are basically anything that you could think of that you could put an outline and curriculum to. They're proprietary yeah. to that instructor, correct? Exactly right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, and, and Force Blue is an example of that. Case in point, uh, Force Blue created the Force Blue scientific diver and the assistant scientific diver. So, but um, awesome stuff, man. Hey, Emily, uh, great job. I mean, appreciate you taking the time out of your day right yeah. here, come on here and jump on with us. And uh, just, just thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Uh, I do have a slide. My last, if you advance, uh, it, my email's out there. I can be found on the Nowy Locator as well. I'm happy. I, I love to collaborate with people. I am certainly no expert. I've had my share of glitches with my slides. But I'm happy to help anybody as I can. And um, thank you for having me. No, I appreciate that. February 16th, yes. We're going to have a um, marketing domination. That'll be backed by popular demand. That'll be David Winford. He'll be back presenting that. A surefire way on how to market your, your store, which is, uh, uh, you know, David, obviously, in the last presentation he did for us was about how to win the profit game. Um, he'll be back making a presentation on, uh, some key components. I've, it's about a four-step process to building a, uh, an effective marketing campaign that brings on true results. Uh, and then from there, we'll just, you know, building uh, down the road here, we're going to talk about how to build smart forms. We'll have the training department in on that. March 16th, we're going to have a conversation about insurance, which I think is a very, very, very important conversation that I believe everyone needs to get in on um, because, yeah, I got insurance, but nobody knows what the heck they got. <laughs> so we really need to understand, you really need to understand, like, you know, if case in point, you know, a lot of people are out there running with these blanket policies where they're throwing everybody in there just thinking, yeah, I got insurance. You don't have insurance. Okay. So, you know, it's, you know, we, you really need to get, listen to this presentation so that the, everybody is extremely educated. And then March 30th, we'll have Quentin DeBoer back to talk about QR codes. Without further ado, we promise everybody we keep these to uh, a, a somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour so that we can say it's always an hour well spent. Uh, thank you, everybody. Please send your ideas. We're truly looking to be worldwide. 
if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions, for instance, I know there's the one hand that went up and I didn't deal with it. Please email me directly, bdoran at nowie.org, and we'll make sure we get that answered. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Bye.